I'm gonna let you into a little secret. I can't afford a Mercedes AMG GT, so I had to buy a half of one. So I bought this example from Copart after it had been involved in a crash, going straight into a brick wall and damaging almost every panel on this car. But my goal is simple, to get this car back on the road for less than it would have cost me to go and buy one that wasn't crashed. But along the way, I want to turn it into something a little bit more special. But sometimes it can be hard to do that and stay within budget. Because it would be pointless to do all of this work and for it to have cost more than it would have cost in the first place to go and buy a straight one. And it's probably going that way. Now, in order to try and fix this car on a budget, I've been scouring the internet trying to find parts at a reduced price to save money on the rebuild. Second-hand parts, in theory, should be cheaper than from the main dealer, although this is not always the case. So you have to be vigilant when you're looking at buying second-hand parts for cars. So this is just a small selection of the parts I've bought brand new from Mercedes, which worked out to be cheaper than buying them second-hand if they were available at all. One of these parts being a crash sensor, which bolts onto the back of the front facing plate of the chassis leg just behind the horn just down there so there's the old one removed and you can see it's only got a little bit of damage to the plug section itself but it's better to be safe than sorry with stuff like this now the horns because these are well both done that one's not even on there anymore so we're going to whip those off and pop on the new ones So there is one very obvious piece missing off the front of this car which goes from here all the way around here which is the crash bar and obviously this got damaged in the accident. And this is the old one here and you can see where it's took the shunt bang in the middle which is well obviously going to ruin it. But I'm hoping that means we can still salvage these end pieces because of the new one. It doesn't come with those, which is great. So I've now got to strip all of the old parts from the broken crash bar and transfer those over to the new one where hopefully everything's going to line up. Well, that didn't quite go as intended. I didn't realise, and I probably should have fairly early, that this bit is mashed up so that can't be going back on the car we need to make sure this is going to be safe so i've ordered a new one of these for now i'm going to put this on so i think i can slot that bit on afterwards Now, it's all well and good owning and building fast cars, but it's sort of a little bit pointless if you can't drive them very well. Sort of like me. So I'm making it my mission for this year to improve my standard of driving, and I'm going to be doing that with the help of EA Sports and their new game, F124. F124's new driver career will give players the most authentic F1 experience, getting you closer to the action than you've ever been before. Where you can race as yourself, your hero, or even a sporting icon. With new steering geometry, revised suspension and damper forces, extended suspension tuning options and realistic weight distribution, all of which help replicate the real world suspension behaviour of a real F1 car. Also a new drag reduction system model and also more effective showcasing of teams individual strengths and weaknesses at varying circuit types. making F124 one of the most realistic driving games available, which is also going to help you transfer it into the real world, helping you learn and memorise tracks before you ever even go to them, learning different sorts of racing lines and so much more. So here we go, Silverstone, I've done this on the sim, and now it's time to transfer it into real life. Let's go. Let's go. The only difference is we're not in an F1 car. The track feels exactly like it, bump for bump, it's identical. Now the only difference between my car and the F1 car is that the F1 car has so much more downforce and grip so I've got to be really careful in the corners compared. So I was able to use what I'd learned in the game out on track in real life because I already knew the circuit, I already knew what lines to take and I already knew where to position myself on track which massively helped. But this car does handle really well. What do you reckon, Eve? Yeah, it handles like some rails. 
So to grab yourself a copy of EA Sports F124 game and immerse yourself in a full F1 experience, make sure to use the link in the description. Now, enough play, let's get back to work. Right, now the crash bar is on, but I'm not very happy with it, I've got to admit, for two reasons. One, because, well, the same reason both sides actually. This back section here, this black bit, is bent on both sides. As you can see here, I've got a small gap down here, which is throwing everything off when I tighten that down. And on this side, this one is just done for. So I've ordered some new ones of these, but there's a problem. And that's because both of these parts are on back order. Back order is, it's not good. It basically means that there's no definite date on when those items will be arriving. So it could be a week, could be a month, could be a few months. So that is a big problem. But for now, I've popped it in place loosely so we can kind of build everything else up around it and then I can change it at a later date when they come in. But yeah, not ideal, definitely not ideal. Fingers crossed they come fast and not in a few months time because that will really screw me over. But now let's talk about the headlights. Now the ones that came on the car obviously are knackered. They're done for. They will never go back on the car because, well, I don't need to explain any further. But I didn't think the price of these from Mercedes was actually too bad because I've got this one here. This is the driver's one, brand new in the box, obviously. For a cost of £1,000, which is a lot of money, but when it comes to headlights, especially for a rare car like this, I don't think that's too shabby. But that does mean that it doesn't come with the ballasts, the parts which make the light work. And what I'm hoping is I can salvage the one off this, which you can see in there, or from the other side, looks like that. And fingers crossed, I can transfer that over from the old light, if it's not damaged, to the new one, and it should just plug in and work perfectly. Those are famous last words. So I can unscrew the old ballast from the old headlight with just four torque screws and a couple of electrical connectors once you're inside. And pop this into place on the new one with a brand new seal as well. I really need these ballasts to work because not only are they quite expensive to buy, but also if you get new ones they have to be coded, which is just another job which we don't really want to do. So now we've got the ballast installed on this lovely new light. Let's try and put it in and see if it's gonna work. In theory it should, but you know what these headlights can be like? They can be an absolute nightmare to get working sometimes. So let's get that plugged in to there. Being as careful as I can, because the last thing I wanna do is scratch it. Now I did consider trying to upgrade these for the facelift version, but when I looked into it with the wiring diagrams, the way the widening is completely different. I'm sure it's doable, but the amount of time I'd spend faffing around trying to do it, these lights, they still look good. So I'm gonna stick with these, since they're much easier to make work, and actually much cheaper to buy the light as well, like half the price. So it's worth sticking with these. But here we go, time to see if the new headlights, or new headlight that I've got, is gonna work. Ooh, puppy! Yeah, that's a good sign. Let's see, let's see. Yes, that's a side light, but let's try to turn it on. Yes, working headlight, let's go. So now we've established that this one works. It would be a sensible time to check for the passenger side, but We've been struck with the same problem as with these crash bar supports because, again, it's on back order. And I feel like now this is about where this whole back order thing's gonna start to take its toll because it's really gonna slow us down, which is not what we want right now. So now we need to find something else to do on the car whilst waiting for those to come in because, well, there's still plenty to do. Now it's time to challenge myself and do something that I've never done before. Because I need to take the roof off this car. And that's because on this particular car, it's fitted with a glass panoramic roof, which was damaged just here in the accident. Obviously, it's had some bricks fly up over the windscreen and smash into this, which is gonna have cracked it. But a roof is not fitted like many other panels, especially a glass one on this car, because with, for a door, for example, you have a couple of bolts in the hinges which hold it on and then you can unhook it. Same with the wings, you've got bolts which hold those panels on. Rear quarters typically have spot welds in, so you can drill those out and then remove that panel. The roof is bonded onto the car. 
So you guys can come along with me on figuring out how the hell I'm going to get the roof off this AMG GT. And the first part of that is on the A-pillar trims. There's an airbag clip which you need to remove and then that hides two Torx bolts which can come out. And also three more Torx bolts which hold in the sun visor. And now to take out the back section of headliner, which is just held in with a few clips. So that is the first of many trims removed. I've now got access to some bolts for the back of these kind of A and C pillar trims. And yeah, so let's try getting those out. Then we've got this blind up the top to remove. There's quite a few pieces to this, I can't lie. So I'm hoping I can remember how they go back together. So now, so now the bolts at the back of that are removed, meaning that I should be able to unclip this. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on now. Hey. Another trim out. Let's go. And now to repeat everything which I've done on the passenger side, on the driver's side. And now on to the front section of the headliner, which is held in place by two more Torx bolts hiding behind all of this center control and lights. So we've got to get that removed and all of the wires unplugged. We can take those out and then it comes away. Big spaghetti, big spaghetti. So now that's out, it doesn't really reveal much of what's going on with the roof, but it does reveal these are a little bit better, so how do they come out? Is it just a pull? There, uh, well, that was easy. Next piece, done. And you as well, thank you. And now what I think is the final piece is this kind of roof blind thing, which I'm a bit reluctant to take out in as many pieces as it seems to want to. So I think it's in about four or five pieces, but I'm a little bit, I want to try and take out in one piece if I can, because the last thing I want is when I put it back in, for that not to, you know, work nice and smooth and for it to be jolty or get jammed because I've moved the frame ever so slightly, but I don't know if that's going to be an option or not. And unfortunately it wasn't. We've got to remove all of these in individual pieces. But now everything on the headliner is stripped down. Now it's time for this glass to come out. And we're going to need some professionals in order to do this. So we've got the boys from AGM Windscreens here to get this glass out. Heavy? No, not. <laughs> Look at that. Whoa! <laughs> Well, that is a channel first. We've got no roof on the AMG GT and it's a bit of a vibe. It lets a lot more light into the cabin, but obviously we're gonna have to put one on at a later date, but I've still got to get that from Mercedes. But I have realized that I've not been 100% truthful and honest about everything when it comes to this car. Let's go and talk about why. Now, it has come to my attention that I haven't been completely transparent with this build like I normally am, and that's just not what I'm about. I've not really shared the cost of 
much of this with you guys and I want to be completely open and honest with you guys about that because for one I didn't even tell you how much my Mercedes AMG GT costs so very quickly we're going to go through exactly how much I've spent on this car and how much I've spent on these parts getting the car to this point because well without telling you that I can't really say if it's been worth it or not. So to buy my Mercedes AMG GT cost me 28,000 pound, making this the most expensive project I've ever bought. So after that being the purchase price of the car, it was a little more than I wanted to spend, but I felt like the project was the right one for me and the right one for the channel at the time. And you guys seem to be enjoying it, which is what it's all about. So the next thing that we went and bought after that was the structural parts for the repair. So that is the uh, radiator support and the inner wing. These were quite expensive, but these two parts were £1,600. I'm just going to call them structural repair parts, even if it's not technically accurate. Then we had to paint those parts, which wasn't too expensive, including the base coat and the clear. I think it was around 60 quid. Then we had the front apron piece, which was damaged in the crash, which kind of holds a lot of the bonnet latches and all the other sorts of bits. That was another 600 pounds. And then there was the dashboard and all of the interior stuff. So the airbag kit was, if I remember correctly, 1300 pound, but that came with the dashboard, uh, dashboard airbag, the glove box and glove box kind of knee airbag and the driver's side knee airbag too and also curtain airbags which I didn't need. So dash kit, 1300. But we didn't just do that on the interior, we've actually had all the seats retrimmed and some of the other bits to match that new dashboard with the yellow stitching which was another, let's call it two grand. We may have got a little YouTube deal on that, so that did help out towards the cost a little bit. So thank you very much to Auto Trim Systems in Beaumont Lees for helping us with that. And I couldn't be happy with how it turned out. So next up was the Rad Pack. This came in at quite a hefty price because originally we thought this was going to be about 3000 But all in with all of the shrouds, the oil cooler, which we forgot to order, and a few other bits. Let's just call this a nice round. 4,200 quid. That one hurt quite a bit. We could have saved some money there if there was a car being broken in the UK, which we could have got parts from. Next up was the metal repairs. That was having the rear quarter pulled, the A-pillar pulled, and all of the repair work done there, ready for paint in the future. Again, we got a reasonable deal from the guys at Flat Out Paint Shop for that, and they charged us, I believe it was 850 quid plus the VAT, so we'll just call it a grand. Then we've got the pair of headlights, which came in brand new at 2,000 pound. One of them hasn't shown up yet. The crash bar was 300 pound, but we're still missing a lot of parts. You might have noticed I've not bought any panels for this car. So I'm gonna let you into a little secret at this point and say that I've bought some panels for the cost of 7,000 pound. Now there's still a miscellaneous amount to this and that roughly comes in at about another thousand and we've still got some faults to try and sort out. Not forgetting as well that at the end of the project, the car's gonna need painting. So, I mean, let's top this up quickly and see where we're at. So, so far, in order to get my car back on the road, excluding the panels, because we'll come back to that at a later date, my spend is 42,000 pound. Starting to question whether this kind of thing's worth it anymore. But this is part of the problem. The lack of availability on second-hand parts on a car like this makes it really tricky to rebuild it on a budget, but I'm trying my best to try and build something special at the end of it. But now we've cleared that up, we've realized I'm no good at business, we can get back to work on the car. Right, now we're back on the Merc, and we're still missing the parts which are on back order because the other headlight is gonna be here in sometime in November, and the crash bar support brackets are gonna be here in October, I think it is. So we need to find some more stuff to do. The roof is ready to pick up from Mercedes, but I've not got it yet. But one thing I wanna do before we do any more work on the car is get this all cleaned up because it's now the perfect time to be able to do that. We can see everything we need to get to and I think we can make it look a hell of a lot better. Because although this car only has 26,000 miles on the clock, it looks like it's got 126,000. Everything is looking, well, pretty well used. So let's try and clean this up and see how good we can get it. And to do that job, we have the Ice Blasters. Woo-woo! The internet's favourite ice blasting company and 
They have covered off the roof and the windscreen to make sure any of the debris from the engine bay doesn't go inside the car. Let's see what magic these guys can work on this Mercedes. <laughs> Dry ice is essentially frozen carbon dioxide, meaning that this can be used in a sort of shot blasting system as a much more gentle and effective cleaning method than something like sand blasting or other media blasting options. And on top of that, compared to other media blasting methods, when the dry ice melts, there's nothing left at all. So you've got no sand or other debris left around apart from the dirt which came off the car. Right, you're up. <laughs> Well, take a look at that. Is that not completely transformed? Especially on the suspension components. We could see how these were looking before, and this is how they're looking now. Do they not look, well, brand new? Sensational. The engine bay is all cleaned up. We've got rid of all of the old brick dust out of all of the nooks and crannies, all down the brake servo and everything's looking loads better. And all down the sides here as well. That is brilliant. It's ready to go back together now, isn't it? Sorted. You smashed it as always. You're the man. So if you want to get hold of the ice blasters to get your car or loads of other stuff you can ice blast actually as well, their links are going to be in the description. But unfortunately for now, that is all we've got time for for this week. Make sure you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. We're aiming for that 250k mark by the end of the year and I will catch you next time.